hope you're doing what you need to do to move your business forward. Business, hospital setting, pediatric setting, mobile PT practice, private practice, it doesn't matter to put the patient first and set everybody up to move towards, which this goal, this talk is about today, towards patient success. Because without patient success, you can't get business success. Without patient success and business success, you can't get happy employees. And without all those things, you'll never have what I call a happy bank account. For those of you out there that like to say money in the bank is the ultimate business metric, I call bullshit. Because money in the bank doesn't say how you're, biz how you're running your business. Because by the way, I'll challenge you on this. Most physical therapy clinics in this country have been set up to bill insurance. Sit on that one for a while. They are established to bill insurance. The patients become second. Patient success is not number one. Billing insurance is number one. That may put a lot of money in your bank. If you're happy looking at money in the bank based on billing insurance, more power to you. I don't want any part of it. I'll help you move away from that. And actually, that's what a lot of my current customers are dealing with currently. They realize that focusing on billing is not going to move them forward. And I'm talking people with multiple practices. It's about putting patient success first. And that's a perfect segue into the mindset of which I was saying in this one shift you need. So I've been looking back over my content, really trying to fine tune the story I'm trying to tell of how I can help you. And therefore, I've got to be able to tap into people's heads who think it's all about insurance billing. I got to tap into people's heads who thinks all that matters is what insurance you have when you call in. I got to tap into people's heads who realize their team members are not connected. And that rather than building out an incentive program for the front desk team members, the provider members, and the billing team members, that they must come up with an ultimate goal. And that, that's what we're talking about today. So I want to reverse engineer this, okay? So everybody says they need more new patients of which I call bullshit again. If you're not tracking how many calls into your business you have, then you don't know if you need more new patients. You may, but you may not. Once you're tracking calls, then you know how many of the people that call to do business with you actually do business with you. Simple enough, it's called conversion rate. By the way, that's also called lead conversion. You're taking someone who's interested in doing business with you and you're taking them and putting them on the schedule so that they arrive and you have now converted a lead into a patient, paying customer, client, whatever you want to call it, okay? Lead generation is getting that call. What goes on to get that person to dial your phone number? That's lead generation. Lead generation is typically what we call marketing. Lead conversion is what your front desk team is doing. People who are responsible for picking up the phone, following up with website leads, whatever it is. When you go out in the community and do an event, that's lead generation. There may be a little lead conversion there, but that's lead generation. You have to be thinking about what the next step is, okay? That's lead conversion. So again, when people say they need more new patients, but they don't understand the difference between lead generation and lead conversion, that's a problem. So again, we got two problems. Don't understand the difference between lead generation and lead conversion. Don't understand and track the metrics that you must track to have a successful business. So those two things, you got to get in your head first. Am I asking the right questions? Am I measuring the right things? And that's for a whole nother uh, Facebook, maybe next week. Am I measuring the right things? Because most people aren't. Visits, no more. Productivity, no more. Those are not the right things to measure. Why? Because they don't set the patients up for success. And I'll tell you, any metric that sets your patient up for success leads to what? Repeat after me, business success. Here's what you have to be thinking. If you get your whole team, and by the way, I've shared this with you the last two, but I wanna be specific on this. If you get everybody on your team to shift their mind to the fact that we need people in this practice, in this business, who will complete a plan of care, then you will be more successful. You will set the foundation for what? Patient success, which leads to business success. If you get your whole team in the mindset that they need to move people towards a completed plan of care, then you will be more successful. 
patients will be more successful, business will be more successful, your providers will be more successful, your billing team will be more successful, your front desk, of course, leads the success train machine, and then therefore your bank account will be more successful. Which again, everybody listening here, it's all about making money. Well, I told you four fucking steps that have to get there before money gets in the bank account. So it's not all about making money. It's about patient success. And as long as you want to get paid and you want benefits and you want vacation time, then there has to be money in the bank. If you want better benefits, there needs to be more money in the bank. If you want more vacation time, there has to be more money in the bank. I'm telling you from the business side. So everybody wins when the focus is around what? The patient and the mindset of a completed plan of care. Now, let me tell you why that is the ultimate business metric because I'm gonna tell you everything that goes into that. And I wrote it in the write-up for this. A completed plan of care means that someone A, arrived, front desk, that someone is paying at each visit, that's front desk and billing team. You see how the team's coming together for success here? They stay less cancels, that's providers, that's front desk, and I would argue that's billing team because if they're paying and they're staying, there have been no financial surprises. And what, lastly, they do your marketing for you. Again, that's front desk, that's providers asking for the referrals, sharing they need the referrals. That's, yeah, so sorry, asking and sharing that you need referrals. That's also having them fill out their NPS surveys and their promoter scores. And then that information feeds back into your marketing program. They tell more people, that is your marketing program. So what's interesting enough is when you get the whole team focused around completed plans of care and getting people in the door who arrive, pay, stay, completed plan of care, and do the marketing for you, magically it's, I don't need more new patients. It's, I need patients who will arrive, pay, stay, and do my marketing for me. Hmm, how do I do that? Because right now, the phone's ringing off the hook. Everybody, or th this is the best part. Everybody's phone is ringing off the hook and my front desk doesn't have more time to manage these phone calls. And I'm like, what's your drop-off rate? How many people aren't completing a plan of care currently? How many people disappear on you? 30, 40%? That's a fucking waste of everybody's time, money, and energy. And by the way, that's why your front desk burns out. That's why your providers burn out. When people arrive and take a space and come for a couple visits and then because you didn't manage and set expectations well, they drop off either by not telling you or calling and saying just cancel the rest. You didn't manage and set expectations well. That is a churn and burn. And the burn is on your staff. That takes a lot of energy out of your staff. Because now, here's the other thing. Arrive, pay, stay, complete a plan of care and do your marketing for you means that you have less drop-offs. Follow me here. And what have you been doing for the last five, 10 years? You've been training your staff on how to chase drop-offs. How about we solve that problem further upstream and now magically your staff doesn't have to chase drop-offs, they're just keeping patients happy. They're doing what they need to do. When your provider gets the right person sitting across from them who arrived, who knows how much it costs them and they pay, and then they buy into the plan of care, you don't think there's gonna be less turnover on your staff? You don't think there's gonna be less people constantly looking for that next job? When your front desk knows how to have a better conversation with a potential new patient, not a new patient, they're not a fucking new patient to like visit three. If people are dropping off the schedule after visit three, you don't need more new patients. So if your front desk knows the process and how to manage their phase of the patient life cycle, they will be happier. Because by the way, the people who arrive are happier because they've had their expectations managed. So again, the one thing here is you have to get your team, and again, these last three are coming together really nicely, these last three Facebook Lives coming together really nicely. You have to get the whole team focused behind this common mindset. All they have to be thinking of, is this what I need to do to get a completed plan of care? Now all of a sudden your front desk aren't taskmasters. All but now all of a sudden your providers aren't chasing down drop-offs, trying to get one more visit. That's the other thing, man. 
you are now currently, and I'll call you out on this, you're now currently chasing your providers week in and week out to get one more visit and to get their drop-offs back on the schedule. And I'm like, you're so chasing the wrong problem. A problem that you created by not getting everybody focused on a complete plan of care, completed plan of care, and making sure the front desk knew the vital tasks to do that. The providers know their vital tasks, their KPIs. And the billing team knows it. Everybody leaves the billing team out. I'm like, we gotta bring the billing team back in. Magically, everybody drops off after they get their first DOB. Why the fuck is your billing team not in line with what it takes to complete a plan of care? And by the way, it's not that they got a bill for too much money, it's they got a surprise bill. And people don't like uncertainty. They've lost control. And when they get uncertainty, they worry about the next surprise bill. So their first gut is, I need to cancel until I get this figured out. How many times have you had that phone call? When I was working the front desk, I got it weekly. That's how I figured this all out. So when that person doesn't get a surprise bill, they don't drop off because there is less uncertainty because they know what they have to pay. They know there, there may be a problem. By the way, you set expectations. You can't guarantee them anything. Insurance side, that's all right. Just give them certainty around when and if it happens, you will help them. And that it's the insurance company's fault. Stuff like that. That's a billing mindset around what? A completed plan of care. So the shift is your whole team behind one ultimate business metric, completed plan of care. Yes, I said business metric. A completed plan of care is a business metric. It's a patient metric. It's a business metric. It will set the patient up for success. It will set the business up for success. Because why? Think about the metrics that you're currently chasing individually that have to do with arrive, pay, stay, complete a plan of care, and do your marketing for you. And you've built these systems individually without an awareness of the bigger picture. And when you try to deal a lot of these billing issues and financial issues with the billing team at the time they occur, you're spilling, you're spinning your wheels. Once you realize it's about a completed plan of care and what goes in, you'll shift a lot of that setting and managing of the expectations on the billing side to your front desk. And by the way, that's not your front desk giving cost and things like that. It's your front desk telling the person on the end of the phone what to expect. And I love saying this, it's simple, it's not easy. It is simple, people. It is really simple. So it is, it is simple, it's not easy. Get the mindset around completed plans of care. These are people who arrive, right? So arrival rate, visits, all that bullshit you have matched up into that is about arrival. People who stay, cancels drop-offs, no-shows, right? All that is people who stay. Just focus on that. Say, we need people who arrive, pay, stay, complete a plan of care, and do our marketing for us. That's it. But don't go out and chase these individual metrics at each level and try to get people to fix them. It has not worked. Because my follow-up question is, how has it worked for you to this point, right? And then as then as you worry more about the external stuff that you can't control, like declining payment, which you all call reimbursement, it's declining payment, then what do you try to do? You yell harder, get the drop-offs down, get the visits up. You guys see the little cycle that occurs here? If it's about completed plan of care and people know when they arrive all these different things, and then magically they get this statement from the insurance company and they owe a little more money, and they've received the value and all the expectations you set, are being met, they reach a little deeper into their pocket. Because we're not selling fucking toasters here. We're selling their desired outcome. And if their desired outcome is important enough to them, and I get it, there's a big world out there. If it's important enough to them, they figure out how to make it work. And you may have to work a little tighter with them. But scheduling someone for physical therapy at 10.30 on Thursday, that's not solving anybody's problem. Not knowing their desired outcome before they arrive, this is the process I'm talking about. So once you get the team together behind the completed plan of care, then you got to go to each group, right? Then you got to go to each group and go, this is what you got to do. And now I'm getting into the weeds about how to manage and set expectations with the first phone call. And then phase two, how to deliver on most of those. So by the time that person does arrive for visit number one, they're bought in. And then their provider, Dr. Jerry Durham, who they know is their provider, who is the right fit for them to get them back to 18 holes of golf and picking up their grandchild pain-free, greets them with those goals. Because why? Because the front desk did what they need to do to start a patient on a journey towards what? A completed plan of care. 
and then the provider picked it up, just got past the baton, and it was the cleanest baton handoff you've ever seen. So this is the beauty of it. The baton gets handed off, and it's cleaner than anything you've ever seen in your life in any relay race. And the, and the, and the patient, potential patient to patient, doesn't even realize the baton's been handed off. It's just clean and clear and concise, and they don't have any reason to drop off because it, expectations were managed and set and they arrived knowing this and they arrived for their third visit knowing what was expected of them and they arrived for their sixth visit knowing what was expected of them and they got that video from your billing team after visit three explaining that you, me, I'm Jerry from the billing team can help you with this. If you get this and you don't know how to read it, call me at this number because your billing team knows that's what it takes now to get a completed plan of care. As God is my witness, people, this is it. This is it for 2020, all right? And speaking of 2020, I'm over. But this is it. Complete a plan of care. Patients who arrive, pay, stay, complete a plan of care, and do your marketing for you. That's it. And again, I told you already that those four things encompass all these metrics that you've been focusing on and in the weeds on that by themselves do nothing. Get your team behind complete a plan of care and show them how they play a role in people who arrive, people who pay, people who stay, and people who do your marketing for you. And then give them their KPIs based on working towards a completed plan of care. That's it, it's that simple. Go back and watch from the beginning. These things are coming together really nicely, in spite of me. They're coming together really nicely. And it's putting everything in a nice little package that you have to think about every day to run a successful business that does what? That's focus on patient success because that's what leads to business success and ultimately leads to personal success.